appearance in 20 years. Today, they face a battered but determined Iowa team. The Hawkeye coach, Hayden Fry, is hoping to avenge their loss a year ago when Illini quarterback Jack Trudeau picked the defense apart in a 33 to nothing route. It's homecoming at Iowa as Illinois meets Iowa in a crucial Big Ten confrontation. CBS Sport presents College Football. Live from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, it's the Fighting Illini of Illinois versus the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet, who invites you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts. And by Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. The last time Kinnick Stadium was not sold out, Jimmy Carter was still in the White House, and Hayden Fry was attempting to turn the program around. Today, you couldn't beg, borrow, or pay a scalper's price to get a seat. And what a glorious day for a football game. 45 degrees, a mild wind in the forecast, sunny skies the rest of the day. The Big Ten standings critical this early. Illinois breaks fast, 2-0, and, oh, and you can see that Iowa is still winless in the conference, having lost a week ago to Ohio State and the talents of Keith Byers. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. I said critical, especially for Iowa. They have gone to a bowl game under Hayden Fry the last three years, and to begin that march back, they must have this game this afternoon. For Illinois now, the defending Big Ten champion, they cannot appear in the Rose Bowl. They have been placed on two years probation. They cannot appear in a bowl game for one year because of recruiting violations. Now, a pleasure for me to be working alongside the former Northwestern and Notre Dame coach, Errol Parsegan. And Errol, there's no Rose Bowl incentive for Illinois, but we did not find a group of athletes who are down and disgusted about that. They're very upbeat with great confidence, and they have every reason to be. Last week, they destroyed Michigan State in the second half by outscoring them 30 to nothing. And they really, the coaching staff, the players, everybody connected with the Illini, feel like they've gelled. And anybody that watched them out here yesterday afternoon, as we did, they're spirited and ready and playing with confidence. Well, Hayden Fry has lost his last two to two great teams in Penn State, Ohio State, but he's still got that down home Southwest humor. He sure does. As a matter of fact, when I asked him about it, he says, you know, Coach, he says, he says, we've got two big holes in us, he says, but we're still alive. You know, the expectations out here were really great because they returned their entire defensive unit, all of the skilled positions, but a combination of the injuries really hurt them, along with turnovers that were costly. But this team outgained the two teams they lost to by about 100 yards. They're averaging 436 yards a game. And the guy that's responsible for that is their great quarterback, Chuck Long, who has amazing statistics, a sensational record. All right, Errol, well, we're focused in here on Iowa and Illinois. There's a big picture unfolding in college football. And to get an update right now, let's go back to New York and Pat O'Brien. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Let's get you right up to date now on the latest breaking sports news of the day. In baseball, the American League West Division winner was decided late last night with results that have been typical of the stretch run. The second place Minnesota Twins blew a 10-0 lead in an 11-10 loss to the Indians. That meant all the Royals needed to do was beat the A's to wrap up the division title. And with this pitch in Oakland last night, Dan Quisenberry got Ricky Henderson out on a fly ball to center. Willie Wilson squeezes it for the final out in a 6-5 win over the A's that touched off a celebration out there in Oakland. In tennis, the U.S. took a two-love lead over Australia last night in their, sem in their Davis Cup semifinal. The Americans now can wrap up a spot against Sweden in the finals with a win in doubles today. Big college football action today features Texas against Penn State, Tennessee and Auburn, and number one Nebraska against Syracuse. We'll keep you posted on those games with updates throughout the afternoon. I'll be joined by Pat Hayden, and we'll have Heisman candidate Doug Flutie live in our studios at halftime. We'll send you back to Brent and Era in Iowa after these messages and a word from your local station. Back live, Kinnick Stadium, Iowa City, Iowa. And here come the defending Big Ten champions, the Fighting Illini. Running past a large group of their fans who have traveled from the state of Illinois for this confrontation in nearby Iowa. And now, here come the Hawkeyes. field advantage it is real for the Hawkeyes as far as Hayden Fry is concerned a year ago era, these two teams met in Champaign and 
Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes, they were embarrassed, 33 to nothing. They really were, and the big problem was seven sacks by the Illini on Chuck Long. If the fans want to watch and get a key to this football game, see whether or not the offensive line of Iowa can keep the Illini blitz off of Chuck Long. Now, Iowa's had to redesign their entire pass protection rules because of the nature of the defense. And the two people that are instrumental in this, Owen Gill and Ronnie Harmon in the backfield, they'll hold tight in there to give adequate protection. And if Chuck Long is expected to get a good game, they're going to have to protect for it. All right, yeah, when the Illini have the ball, they have a quarterback who's just as capable as Chuck Long, Jack Trudeau. And he has the most dangerous wide receiver in this game today in David Williams, a young man who could catch 100 passes before the year is over. Era, they must get the ball to Williams. And they will get the ball to Williams. He already has 500 yards. But Mike White said they think they lost the Stanford game because they got greedy going for the bomb. And the word that they're using is patience. They want to establish, if they possibly can, the running game with Thomas Rooks, who got 132 yards last week, and establish that first. Then go to their possession pass. Rather unusual for a team that built its reputation in the passing game. The air will be filled, though, as Chuck Long and Jack Trudeau are about to square off. The captain's now coming to the middle of the field for the coin flip, and we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. We are now ready for the kickoff. Illinois won the flip. However, they opted to make the selection as to what to do to start the second half. And so they will be kicking off. And you can see that Tom Quinn was the referee who reached that decision with the Illini captains at midfield. And it means that the Hawkeyes, they have elected to receive here to start the first half. The son of head coach Mike White, Chris White. And his leg is getting stronger and stronger. Against Michigan State, he boomed one kickoff after another into the end zone. Deep for the Hawkeyes, Ronnie Harmon and Robert Smith. Onside kick to start the game. Chris jumps at it, and the Hawkeyes go down in a pile at midfield. So, Coach, a surprise right off the bat. Well, Mike White said there might be some quick surprises. Both coaches will do unusual things, and that was one right there. Guys will have excellent field position. Chuck Long will be working from the 48-yard line, a young man out of Wheaton, Illinois. And here are his favorite weapons. Owen Gill, who was born in London and went to high school there in Brooklyn. Ronnie Harmon out of Laurelton, New York. Scott Helverson, a former walk-in. Bill Happel, his favorite target. On first down, they go to Harmon. He comes around the right side, and he found daylight and good blocking. Now, here are the men up front. And again, there are a couple of injuries. Mike Haight is playing with an injured back. Kelly O'Brien, the starting guard. The center, Mark Senliger. The other guard is extremely aggressive, Bill Glass. And here's the key position, Herb Wester, the left tackle. He's been switched from the right side over to the left. And now, of course, second and short, the Illini defense will have to guess. They come back to Harmon. He moves back inside for a first down and inside the 35-yard line, almost to the 31. Excellent running there by Ronnie Harmon. He bounced off a would-be tackle and got the yardage basically on his own. Watch here as he comes off tackle to the left. Gill throws an excellent ball clock, number 33. And, of course, Harmon shakes loose from the tackler and comes upfield for some good yardage. Here are the onside kicks, such a tremendous gamble to start a game of this magnitude. When it fails, Iowa is within striking distance. And here they are now operating at the Illini 31. Halverson goes in motion behind Long, and they come to Gill this time. And they get another first down. And again, the Illini defense was key to stop Harmon. Now, here are some of the young men up front for the Illini. David Ina from San Francisco. Ron Baum from Walnut, Illinois. And here's the young man who's played so well, Guy Tipatillo, alongside Alec Gibson. It is a brand new front seven. Now, like Michigan State, Illinois uses what is known as an even, or a 4-3 defense. They move one of the backers up in the line now, and he will come in motion. The handoff is to Harmon to the left. To the corner. And he goes in. Ronnie Harmon just stepped out. He went inside the five-yard line. At 
the two-yard line. They just did get him out. You watch the linebacker, Bob Sebring, which is interesting. With the motion, he chases across the motion. It leaves him one man short, and Iowa's got an excellent game plan on this drive, Brent. They shuttle the play in from the sideline. Aiden Fry calls the signals. Mike White, of course, runs the Illini offense, too. He will be connected with his offensive assistants. Right now, though, he's wondering what his defense can do on first and goal. Now it batters right straight ahead, and they've got it. Touchdown. You know, Brett, uh, I think the reason that the Illini elected to defend the goal and try the onside kick is because they had such confidence in their defense. But Iowa came out with a tremendous game plan, drove right down the field, and this could be a psychological advantage to the Hawkeyes, believe me. Tremendous gamble by Mike White, especially in Iowa City. If you were playing in Champaign, where you would get that home crowd in behind you. Well, Harmon... Harmon certainly demonstrated his capabilities. He ran four times for 37 yards in that drive. And Tom Nickel has added the extra point. You see them here in the power eye. They practiced this during the course of the week. We watched them on Thursday and Friday. Two lead backers, Owen Gill right there leading through, throws low, and you see Harmon makes a second effort, spins off, and gets that ball across the goal line for the first score. And the fighting Illini will be back to see if they can answer that quick touchdown by the Hawkeyes in just a moment. Touchdown run puts the Hawkeyes with the lead now, and Tom Nickel will be kicking off here for Hayden Fry and the Hawks. Larry Ashley will be the deep man, and they're getting the clock set right now, and that's why we've got a pause on the field. So Mike White gambled, and now, Arrow, when he's looking up from a 7-0 deficit, that patience you talked about is about to be tried. Well, it'll be interesting to watch what he does here. I think that he will go ahead and try to establish the running game before he goes to his possession passes. He might regret now onside kicking, but it was a big risk, and he told us to expect the unexpected. But it's the kind of football you love, especially in the Big Ten. No two men have turned this conference around like the two you're watching shoot it out here today. Mike White and Hayden Fry. Why do you know what Woody Hayes and Bo Schembecker would have done if one of them had kicked an onside kick to start a Big Ten game? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Turnovers have been a major problem for the Hawkeyes. Well, as you well know, Brent, as I mentioned at the top, top of the show, that this football team is averaging 436 yards a game. If it hadn't been for the errors, I'm talking about Iowa, they would have possibly won one of those two ball games easily enough, but they have been a victim of their own mistakes. As a man who has an excellent rapport with his athletes, Aiden Fry. I was impressed with the way he handled his team when we were here on Thursday. The leadership qualities in that man were very evident. Clock is set. 13.45 to go, and already the Hawkeyes lead it by seven. And they kick it to one of the short men now. It is Steve Blazer. Jack Trudeau is the quarterback, and he's a splendid passer, as you know, especially if you followed the Illini last year. Ray Wilson, a running back, he'll go out and catch a lot of balls. Thomas Rooks, he worked hard against Michigan State from scrimmage. There's his top weapon, David Williams. Randy Grant played high school football with Jack, so he knows him well. And Cap Boso is the tight end, and Jack will use his tight end. In fact, frequently they will use two and even sometimes three. This is a pro-style attack that the Illini have. Fumble in the backfield. Trudeau goes back on it. Messed up the exchange. You know, for a football team that was really sky high yesterday, they're off to a very poor start. And it's an exchange fumble, it appears. He does not get the ball secure. They were going to try to run Wilson to the left side, but Trudeau does come back, fall on the ball, smart move, but there's negative yardage. Giving them a second and 18. And now the Hawkeyes will have to walk. The Illini receivers, they slot Williams, and they'll put Grant in motion behind Trudeau. And they'll run the draw play with Rooks. Good hit by Keith Hunter. Now, here's the offensive line for the Illini, and they've got a couple of men who are outstanding. Jim Jariga, he was a high school teammate of Chuck Long and Chris Babyard. Now, that side of the line, that's as tough as any in the country. Bob Miller is a veteran offensive center. 
Over the left, Rick Shelty, extremely aggressive, underrated. And the tackle on that side is Mark Dennis. It is third and ten as Rooks got them back to the original line of scrimmage with that draw play. Single setback. Williams is out to Trudeau's left. In they went to Rooks. It's quite a series for the Hawkeyes. Now on this punt, the Hawkeyes have one of the fastest return men in the conference. He's a track man, and he'll be receiving this punt now. Chad Little will boom it, and Robert Smith is the man that he will try to keep the ball away from if he can. will wisely let this one roll dead out of bounds. Aaron, in that first sequence, the Iowa defense was extremely aggressive. Well, the, the fumble was the key thing when Trudeau on the exchange problem put him in a negative position. They came back and got eight yards, but third and ten, uh, they stretched the defense, but they attempted to run, but there was a breakdown again, so their first series was less than productive. Now, on Iowa's first series, in case you just joined us, it was extremely productive. Resulted in a touchdown, and again, they're going to the flanks. Here's Harmon. Trying to get outside, but he was hit there quickly. Good support by David Edwards, number 27 of the line I team. He's really a fine football player. He's a strong safety and uh, an outstanding tackler. Robert Smith shuttling the play in now for Hayden Fry. And again, this is the first year that they have used the 25 second clock in the Big Ten. Long brings the Hawkeyes up to the line of scrimmage, and that timer is down at 15 seconds. Operating out of the eye. Fake to Gill, and they'll swing to Harmon to get him open in the play. And he was tackled by number nine, Mike Heaven. This is one of what they wanted to do to get that ball in Ron Harmon's hands, and they certainly did there. He's an outstanding runner. He gets in the open field. He can go for great yardage. It's just a little fake to the draw on the inside to hold the linebackers and then dump it off to a great running back and go one-on-one -on -one with anybody out there. Now, we want to watch the young man who is at left tackle, and that, of course, is Wester in there. He's replacing injured Dave Proston, and they were concerned about that position, but he looks like he's holding in there pretty well. On third down, they come up short. It was Gill. And he is short of a first down, and the Hawkeyes will have to punt. It was a good play by Dave Ina there coming in. He pinched down to the inside and got right into the running lane. Era, we have seen so far that Iowa is going to attack the flanks, but they could have trouble moving behind that young, inexperienced line up the middle as they did right there. Buster Bueller's punt. Avenatis with the return, and he slammed down at the 20 yard line. We come back, Jack Trudeau and the Fighting Illini will take over, and they trail it by seven. Takes over on its own 20-yard line now. Jack Trudeau brings them up. He'll have Rooks alone in the backfield. He'll have a wingback Wilson to his right. Williams is split deep outside to his left. Now he'll bring Wilson back. Rooks. Let's meet the Iowa defense right now. Mike Hooks over at left end. He'll drop off and pass coverage for them occasionally. Paul Hufford, very strong inside man. New nose guard. Jeff Drost draws that job. The regular is injured. George Little has perhaps had the best year of the front five. Dave Strobel, another defensive end who will frequently drop back. So far, they have played with a great deal of desire here against this Illinois offense. This is Wilson. And he gets out to the 30-yard line. And that should be a first down. Now here's the rest of the Iowa defense. And it includes a couple of outstanding linebackers. Kevin Spitzik coming back from an injury. And of course the All-American, he can do everything, number 36, Larry Station. Keith Hunter, and this is a hard-hitting secondary for the Hawkeyes. Nate Career in Brooklyn, another teammate of Gills in high school. Mike Stoops, he's the ringleader, the defensive captain. And Devon Mitchell, also out of Brooklyn, he is perhaps the best athlete pure athlete now in that secondary. 
So three young men out of Brooklyn who played together. High school football representing the Hawkeyes against Mike White, Jack Trudeau, and the rest of the Illini. They flop the tight ends. The Hawkeye defense switches accordingly to the strong side, which is the right. This is Rook straight ahead, and he is brought down quickly. George Little did a tremendous job from the right defensive tackle. Brent pinched down to the inside and came in and cut it off. You know, one of the things about this Iowa team, they have been vulnerable to the bat pass, but they've only given up 111 yards per game against the rush. Now here it is second and eight. How is Jeff Dross doing down there in the middle now? Of course, he has replaced their normal middle guard, Hap Peterson. When you switch a tackle in there, that could be somewhat difficult for him. He seems to be holding up pretty well. They lost Peterson, and of course, they put a tackle back in there. There's Trudeau. Flushed from the pocket. And short of the first down. And again, that was good defensive pressure. Really was. And I'll say this, that uh, basically the Illini have tried to establish a running game, but uh, a bit of difficulty. They were trying to throw it that time, was flushed out. Aiden Fry encouraging his defense. They face third and about one and a half right now. Two tight ends on the field for the Illini. Hawkeye defense pinches in. Jack Trudeau will audibleize. He has full control over this attack. Setback switch. He'll throw the pass for the first down. Rooks. So they went to the tight defense era, and Jack did a beautiful job of audibling that time. Well, he really did. He took advantage of the left flat by changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He's going to go right. He audibleizes, rolls to the left, slips the ball in the left flat. You see no coverage there. He read that. Rooks takes the ball out of the backfield and picks up the first down. Excellent piece of quarterbacking. And White continues to gamble. On the ready list, of course, was the option. Third and short. Trudeau came up firing. He has already tried an onside kick, which failed. And Iowa marched to a touchdown. But now the Illini are on the move. They're at midfield for Mike. Single setback. And they come to the short side of the field with Rooks. Well, there's no question, Coach, that when Mike talked to you, about being very patient today. The man he was talking about is Thomas Rooks, number 42 out of St. Louis. Well, he's their strong runner. He's their one guy that they want to use in there, and he had a great day last week. He's, he averages about 5.1 yards, and uh, I like him. I watched that game last week, and I thought he played an outstanding football game. And they are showing patience. Rosso, the tight end goes over to the left, known as the strong side. I was showing a four-man rush. To go with time, incomplete, probably should have been caught by the tight end Boso, who was working left to right. It's one of the things about the passing game, you can put the money right there. You got to catch the football. Jackie right. Johnson now checks into that backfield, and Thomas Rooks will leave. We were very impressed with Johnson's blocking against Michigan State when he broke those pins down. He's on Jack's right. Third and long. Here's Wilson on the sweep. Gets past one tackle, but he will be short of that first down. That was Mike Buford, I believe, that got all that penetration. He, he really beat his blocker that time and created almost a negative yardage, but they stopped the line out. be forced to punt and Chad Little is back there to do it again he kept it away from Robert Smith last time Smith is down at about the 12 yard line this time Smith has got it at the 10 comes around the left down but there is a flag back near midfield The bane of a football fan's existence, the yellow flag. <laughs> and coaches. <laughs> Personal foul against the Iowa. A critical mistake by mm. the Hawkeyes on that punt. A personal foul. And it was thrown right at the line, right at the in the area of the center snap. That means that Jack Trudeau and the Illini offense will have excellent field position. So there is a big mistake by the Hawks.
let's see if we can take a look at what happened in there. It has to be on the left side. Let's watch the center. He's really knocked back. And I don't see anything from that angle. Looks like the personal uh, fall during the kiss. That's a defense. Now, a difference between college and professional football. They will not give us the number of the player who committed the infraction. And we obviously do not want to guess in this situation, but it was extremely costly. Illinois now has the ball at the 32 going in. And Trudeau will throw plenty of time on the roll right. And he gets a good seven yards out of it. You know, Brent, I think that uh, that penalty was very, very costly to them. And it's the same thing that occurred to them, happened to them in the losses to the Penn State as well as Ohio State last week. Oh, I thought there was another penalty. Here's Trudeau rolling out to the right. There is absolutely no contain there. And he elects to run the football because the coverage is there. He made the right decision. Now it's second and short, and you're within striking distance at the 25. You can do something here. But instead, power football for the first down. And that's Eric Wyckoff, a young man that Mike White has a lot of confidence in for the future. Pretty good size back. He's 6'1", 210. A good power runner. This Illinois team has won its last 12 Big Ten games. Michigan was the last school in the conference to beat them. However, Mike has also lost two of his last five. He should stay out of the state of California. <laughs> I should have, too. <laughs> First down, and here's Wyckoff, and there's another fly. Wyckoff moving to the 20-yard line. I think there was motion that time. Now, Wyckoff. Illinois has been lethal this season when they got inside the 20-yard line. I think it, I think they've scored every time in 17 attempts inside that 20, haven't they? They really have been dynamite. The legal procedure on the offense. Decline. Second down. They elect to take the down rather than the penalty. So Hayden wants the defense now set in a second and about a long eight. It's not a full nine. Wyckoff goes out on the right flank. Rooks is set behind Trudeau. Williams slotted over here to the left. Another audible by Trudeau. He's going for Williams. Incomplete. Boy, Trudeau put it right on the money that time. I thought Williams had it. He's got sure hands. The coverage is pretty good, but Williams can really run. Watch him right here, number one. He saw he, saw he had one-on-one. -on -one. Trudeau picked it. He just throws it over his right shoulder. Number 21, Devon Mitchell goes up with him, but it looks like Williams is going to have it. Normally, he would have that ball. Third down. shows the same formation. They're really stretching the perimeter. Looking in the same direction, but he drops it off incomplete this time. That was intended for the freshman tight end, Anthony Williams. Another fine young prospect for Illinois. So now it will be the coach's son, a former high school basketball player who was not a kicker in high school, played some Soccer, Mike related. He said it was up to him if he wanted to try to make it. And now he has come on to be one of the most impressive kickers in the Big Ten. Ball will be put down at the 26 yard line. 36 yard attempt by Chris. And it's good. That makes it nine for ten in field goals. He's had a he's having a great year. And his dad's gonna be real proud of him, I'll tell you. So Iowa marches for a touchdown. A mistake allows Illinois to get on the board with a field goal. We'll be right back. We are back now, and Chris White will try it again. And the Hawkeyes are probably saying to themselves, listen, if he does try that onside, <laughs> let's make sure we get it again. But I don't think he will try it here twice this early. They get on the board with that drive there, 36-yard field goal. Four minutes and one second to go. In the first period, we're in Iowa City. 
with the Hawkeyes leading the Illini seven to three. Now Ronnie Harmon and Robert Smith are set deep to return. This time Chris takes it deep, and this is Harmon. And he will down it right there. It'll come out on the 20. You know that awesome Nebraska team. They're playing Syracuse today. And to find out what's going on, let's go to New York. Thank you. Nebraska starts off strong again, Aaron. Well, they've got a great football team. Now Chuck Long brings the Hawkeyes up. And on first down, he'll move ahead with Owen Gill, his fullback. In the loss to Penn State, Owen Gill was the tailback. But after they lost their fullback, Gill was switched to fullback against Ohio State, and Ronnie Harmon was sent back to tailback, the position that he wanted to play all along here in Iowa. But that's quite a tandem between Harmon and Gill. That's a great running combination, about as good as there is in this conference. Now, with this second down, the Illinois defense will be guessing. Long comes up fast. Time drops it over the middle to Gill. He's got the first down. He took a lick as he delivered that ball. The Illini looped in behind him. This is a play they ran successfully last week. Just a little delay in there by Owen Gill. And then he dumps it in front of the linebackers right here as they zone off. And they pick up a first down. A nice piece of work. They take another look here at Gill dropping back. Watch from the left side. He almost gets it just before the throw. So Chuck Long brings them up again as he... Delivered that pass and took the hit there for the Hawkeyes. Dropping back, rolling to the right, which he likes to do. Overthrows his man, Happel. Bill Happel, the intended receiver, and the pass was simply up over his head. There's a delayed flag down there, Brent. It has to be a dead ball foul because it came very late. The legal receiver down the field. Also lost it down. So another mistake, and yes. we get word that Pittsburgh, in the midst of an extremely disappointing season, has just scored against West Virginia, 7-0. That's probably the biggest disappointment of the year so far. Yeah, they were predicted to be a pretty good football team, but they're 0-3 going into that West Virginia game. Ineligible. Downfield on a pass on the offense. Lost it down. Second down. As a matter of fact, I think that uh, Long could have run because there was no contain, and I think that's what happened. I think the line thought he was going to run the football. But another penalty and mistake. Second and 15 for the Hawkeyes. The Illinois secondary backed off and loosened up. Gill straight ahead. confrontation this is with the Longhorns lead Penn State 7-0 that game's being played in the Meadowlands well, the number two ranking and number four two good football teams Hayden Fry has to be upset about two big mistakes here in the first period pressure that time 91 was leading the way in Ray Harrison he comes from the defensive right end watch him right here long comes back they drop off into a zone this is not a blitz this is just one on one on Wester he goes right back past the tackle they lost Preston in that position this is what we were talking about they failed to hold and he could not get the ball off it's not negative yardage but you can see what happens when the offensive line has injuries Castrovala's second punt. Dangerous return by Illinois. In that situation, you would expect a man to come up with a fair catch in heavy traffic, but he managed to battle for another four yards, and the Illini now will have it in good scoring position. Back in Iowa City and era, here is something that Mike White likes to do. Use his backup quarterback, Ken Cruz. 
California senior is on the field. He puts him into the ball game to get some experience while the pressure isn't really on in the event that his number one guy goes down. He does it every game, and here is Cruz with a series of downs. And he'll hand off to his single setback in that situation, number 41, Steve Brazos. And they're going to come right back up without a huddle. Cruz calls a signal for the line of scrimmage. So this series was obviously put in. Check with me. Incomplete. All of these plays are pre-called and predetermined before he comes onto the field. This is one of the things that uh, Mike White tried to do, and also he's got most of the second unit, unit in there to do it, just to get a feel for this thing. You see again, no huddle. Third down. Cruz again calls a signal for the line of scrimmage. Brazos can't hold on. Now Mike is going to say, okay, you had your chance. Get out of there. <laughs> he does do things his way. You know, I, uh, I wonder about that because, you see, he had tremendous field position. He was right at midfield. They're going to surrender the ball again. And uh, when, I, when I got the ball at midfield, I'd sure like to have my number one group going when I was behind. But he takes a lot of chances. He's been a winner. Chad Little back to punt again. Third time here for Illinois in the first period. A minute 23 to go. Robert Smith would love to have some time to bring this back. Beauty. Great punt down to the six yard line. Smith hoping to sucker the special team by coming up field like he was going to catch it there. But the ball went past him, rolled dead, and now the Hawkeyes will not have good field position. Get an update on Texas. Let's go back to New York, and here's Pat again. Penn State, one of the teams that beat the Hawkeyes right here in Iowa City. And it was a couple of mistakes that did the Hawks in. A couple of fumbled punts in that game turned out to be critical. First down. Chuck Long, Ronnie Harmon on the left side. can ill afford a mistake down in this territory because they're really not on offense even though they have the ball. Here you see Chuck Long comes back. Just a power-off tackle play, not taking too many risks. Harmon goes off. It looks like a hole there as number 66 comes through the hole, Bob Miller. And uh, I, I, I would be very careful in this area because they're really not on offense because of the field position. Second down and long. Sends motion to the right side, and on a cutback, Harmon comes out with a slip run, close to a first down. Good running once again. He got him out of that dangerous area, quarterback on the six-yard line. Here, they've made another switch in that offensive line. Tom Humphrey, number 65, has replaced Bill Glass in there for the blocking, and you can see that Arkansas State has gone ahead of Jackie Sherrill and Texas A&M by six, again, just in the first quarter. Third and very short. Chuck Long will come over to the sideline. And as they have come to the end of the first quarter here in Iowa City, and we'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. And ready to start the second quarter. The Hawkeyes have an important third down deep in their own territory around the 15. They lead the fight in the line. I seven to three. And from the power eye formation, they get the first down with Ronnie Harmon trying to get outside. He breaks the tackle. This is an exciting runner, Frank. He really is. Ron Harmon was a flanker last year. He moved back to the tailback. And when he gets into the open, watch him here just from the power eye on a third and short. Takes the ball, finds the daylight, gets a good block there from Owen Gill. Breaks to the outside, number 27, a sure tackler, Dave Edwards. You see Harmon shake him loose, cut back to the inside. This is a good one. You've got to be careful about him in the secondary. He's finally brought down. Another 18 yards for Harmon, 67 already in just eight carries. Now this is Gill, the fullback. <laughs> Statistics from the first quarter. You can see yards rushing. Now that's the Harmon advantage, 72 to 39 over there. No turnovers, time of possession. The Illini had the ball more. Two very important 
plays. There was the onside kick to start this football game. Iowa took the ball at midfield and marched in. Then there was a personal foul on a punt, and the Illini got the ball back, and that led to their field goal, and that's where we stand at 7-3. Happel flanked out to the right now. They switch the setbacks. Long and the center have another fumble exchange, the same thing that happened to them last week against Ohio State. Buckeyes recovered and immediately struck for a touchdown on an option pass by Keith Byers. These are the kind of critical errors that he cannot afford. You cannot have an exchange problem. The ball must get to the quarterback. I couldn't tell whether Long pulled away. Let's see whether he does or not. Let's take a look here from the end zone. He looks all right. It had to be an exchange problem, and there's no one over Mark Sendinger's head. He was blocking to his left, but the ball, the exchange, was still a fumble, a loss of down. This is critical. Third and long. Chuck's running the option. That's one of their goal yard line plays for this week. Strange that they would use it here. And Guy T. Patilla comes up and makes the stop for the Illini. For an update now, let's go back to Pat O'Brien. Fielded by George Arbonitis and hit immediately at the 20-yard line. 37-yard punt and no yards return. Great coverage on that, Coach. You know, one, one would have to say that they've really improved their kicking game because last week on kickoffs, punts, they did not do a good job of covering, but they must have worked on it this week because it's vastly improved. And a reminder that later today, Jerry Cooney fights again. First time in over two years or since he lost to Larry Holmes. And we'll also have the New York Triathlon and the Marlboro Cup featuring Slua Gold. That's coming up right after our football action here on CBS. Jack Trudeau has returned as the Illini quarterback goes over the middle of Boso. The tight end was all alone there in the middle. That'll give them second and short after the nine-yard gain. This is a classic example of the Illini's possession passing. Little delay in there by the tight end, Boso. And Trudeau just dumps it off in front of the linebackers who are zoning back, and they pick up good yardage on it. This is a classic example of the Mike White passing attack. The line I score on the left with Bosa. They'll run in that direction. Ray Wilson just trying to get the first down on that. Mike hooks over on the stop for the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes have been pretty stout against the run during the entire year, giving up just a little over 100 yards, but they have been vulnerable to the pass. You would think Mike White would take advantage of that. Aiden and Long going over some offensive strategy for the next time the Hawkeyes have the ball. And that resulted in a first down after a measurement. So the Illini will have the ball on their own 36-yard line. Larry Station calls the defensive sets for the Hawkeyes. He takes it on a hand signal from the linebacker coach on the sideline. Station number 36, he drops back, and the rush is on, and Trudeau gets away. Escapes the pressure, throws in complete pass interference against Williams, a first down, and another mistake by the Hawkeyes. Number 21, Devon Mitchell, pushed Williams to the ground. It looked as if they had Trudeau trapped for negative yardage. He spun out to the outside right here. As you see, number 64, Paul Huford come in there. There's the interference. Take another look at it right here. Williams is right there. Oh, he tripped, stepped on him. I, it was an in, inadvertent uh, trip, it appeared to be. Spot foul. Defensive pass interference. Spot foul. First down. First down for the Illini, and more importantly, Williams went limping off to the sideline after that incident. Well, they had a wonderful opportunity to get Jack Trudeau for about eight or ten yard loss, but they lost him back there in the pocket. There's David. Appears to be all right. Now they have Wilson. They'll hand off to Rooks, and there's a fumble, and the Hawkeyes have got it. And that is Mike Stoops. two fumbles all year this is the third one you look right in here as Brooks comes in there station hits him right there with some help with Kevin Spitzig 
good tackle, and number 41, Hugh Stoops, comes in there and catches the ball in the air. It is the only the third fumble loss for the Illini. They really protect the ball. Kevin Spitzer got a lick on him, too, didn't he? Now Chuck Long pulls out. He's got time on first down. He's going to Robert Smith, and he overthrew it. Robert Smith was all alone at the 18-yard line. That's the second pass that he's overthrown in the ball game. He had him wide open. Looked like a big gainer from here. Uh, he, he knows it too. He says, "Oh gosh," he says, I, "My fault." J.C. Love Jordan checks in with the play from the sideline, and Smith will come out. So the coach is upstairs spotting for Hayden. They picked out a pattern that would work. You know, Coach, when Robert Smith came over to the sideline, Hayden Fry was not pleased with him, which leads me to believe that perhaps he did not run the correct route. And that, Long was looking someplace else. That's possible. He did come over. There was communication there. And Long also talked to him. for Chuck. One setback. He'll bring Smith in motion behind him. And he throws for the first down. To Bill Happel. You'll watch Mike Heaven, the defensive back number nine, is playing way off of Bill Happel. He's got a big cushion here. It was wide open. Look, you can't even see him in the picture here. Happel turns to the outside. There's no way that Heaven can get there. And of course, they pick up a first down. Iowa is finding holes in that Illinois secondary. They're giving them a lot of formation variations. It's confusing some of the secondary people. Single setback, and here's Love Jordan in motion. Uh -oh. Long under pressure. Won't get this one off. Like 61, Jenkins came in there. This is the thing that the offensive line has got to do. They've got to protect Long if they expect to do anything. Today's attendance, Coach, is the largest ever to see a football game here in Kinnick Stadium. 66,322. That's 147 more folks who somehow pried their way into the stadium here in Iowa City. I think the last time is when I brought my Northwestern team here. <laughs> <laughs> and 19. Long over the middle goes to his tight end Hayes and he's got his first down to the 20 yard line. Jonathan Hayes number 34 working in the middle. And give the offensive line some credit for it because they did hold off the line I rush. It was close. Watch here from the end zone. Long comes back into the pocket. He's looking downfield. He finds his tight end right there. Jonathan Hayes. Great throw. Great catch. This is an excellent drive on the part of Iowa. Here's another angle from the ground. And you see Jonathan Hayes taking the ball in the scene between the linebackers and the secondary. Now a very talented Illinois secondary has to be wondering. Interesting call here. Two tight ends on the first down. And they'll run it with Gill. Good, strong run by Owen Gill. A little misdirection that held the linebackers. They get down to the 13-yard line. Let's see if they go into their power eye in this position, or whether they stay open. They have their, in their goal line attack. They go to the three-back attack, and they've got a variety of plays, which include option plays, passes out of the backfield. Well, they're in the close wing with the eye. Robert Smith comes behind Law, and they go to Harmon. Gill is out in front. Harmon battling to the corner and close to that first down. At about the 10 yard line. He's a good one there, number 31, Ronnie Harmon. Coach, he runs under control as he did that time. Waiting for Gill, eyeing that first down marker. He wasn't trying to get the touchdown. 
and they just are short I think Brent of the first down they got third down I'm sure they'll go to the power eye they could come down the line with the option against the grain or they could throw that fullback flat pass It'll be interesting to watch here this would be a good place for it Tim Sennett another fullback has checked in for Hayden and this is their power eye look that's Sennett over there to the right Harmon first down easily good blocking up front by the right side Tate O'Brien Jonathan Hayes right here he is with the two blocks leading there's Owen Gill number 33 leading through makes a great block on the end a great hole there Harmon finds it and picks up a first down very easily before he's brought down by David Edwards number 27 so even though it's the short side of the field Hayden Fry wants the right side of the line to open the holes for him in these critical situations he is injury riddled over on the left he's opening the formation of the flanker out Long will throw it on first and goal. He's going for love. Jordan intercepted. No, he called him out. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He called him an interception. A spectacular defensive play by number 15, John Ayers. This is a great interception here by John Ayers. 6'1", 190, a senior. The ball was underthrown, but it is a sensational play on a first down play. Really, I don't know. I may have run that ball in there, but Hayden. So when we come back, Illinois will have the ball. They trail seven to three. Time left in the first half here in Iowa City. Era, that was an unusual call for first down going in. Yeah, well, a guy like Ronnie Harmon, who already had 77 yards and still over half a quarter to go, I think I would have elected to run that ball a little bit. Now it is Rooks. And he gets up close to a first down. So they come right back with the young man whose fumble allowed Iowa to go on that march. Play is motioned in it's a good from the sideline. Excuse me, Grant. This is a good waste down situation. Let's see whether they do or not. Or elect to take the first down. Or, uh, let's see whether they go for the bomb or not. Don Pastor. Yep, and then wide to the right. Over the middle, he's got his first down. And there's a penalty marker down on the far sideline. Illegal motion against the fighting Atlanta. It's interesting the strategy here. Uh, Brent Hayden Fry decided that he would drop drop and zone off against Trudeau this year last year they tried to blitz him didn't get to him and this year they're zoning and it's working pretty well they're making him go the long hard way and near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College football broadcast Aaron and I will select Motion the Chevrolet on the offense repeat second down most valuable player of the game from each of the teams and Chevrolet will donate a one thousand dollar scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school That is the first penalty against Illinois here this afternoon. Williams has checked back in, so he certainly is not that hurt. Ball is deflected. And that was the big fella, Jeff Frost, who has been moved into middle guard. He got his hand on that ball. Looks like he's doing a pretty good job in there replacing injured Hap Peterson. He had never played in that position. They moved him from tackle into that nose man. And apparently he's doing a pretty good job. There he is going right in there. Number 76 gets his right hand up, knocks the ball down. They were trying to throw the ball to the tight end, but Dross did a good job. Not bad for size there, is it? <laughs> About 286. Williams is out here to the right. And they'll run on third down. And Rooks has got the first down. And that time, a surprise call by the Illini. Good call on third down. You see right here, Rooks. Good running back. I think it was a good call by Trudeau. Iowa had to deploy to anticipate the anticipate the pass, and they ran that little trap in there with Rooks very successfully. Now the plays are signaled in from the Illinois sideline. Mike White will make the final call. The hand signals are performed by a backup quarterback. That's how the message gets through to Jack Trudeau. First and ten at his own thirty. He'll throw on first down, but you can hear the whistle.
and the 25 second clock had run off. Update on that score, Syracuse has kicked a field goal, trailing the top rated Cornusca 7-3. You know, we're taking a look at two good, big quarterbacks out here in Trudeau and Long, the little fellas. Doug Flutie and Pat Hayden will be coming along at halftime. Ball start on the offense. First down. Doug Flutie has been sensational thus far. He sure has. Exciting little player. Must have good in the Heisman today. Trudeau hands it off, and they're going to swing with Wyckoff. Strong run. Well, I can see what Mike White means. He's got a lot of talent, that young man. He ran right through some would-be tacklers. He was talking about Wyckoff yesterday, and he certainly demonstrated why. He's 210, very strong, just gives him an off-tackle play. They get good blocking at the point of attack. But he should have been brought down for less yardage in this. Right there, number 41, as you see, Mike Stoops tries to knock him down, but doesn't. And Wyckoff picks up good yardage. Split back. They'll swing like off the other direction. Fumble. Now it goes right after it. And they've got another turnover. Big Larry Station. Boy, that was a good contact fumble. The other one was a good contact fumble that we saw, but that was a bandy there. Now the Hawkeyes are really hitting hard. But now, can the offense take advantage of still another turnover? Chuck Long will be coming up. They will have field possession at the Illinois 42-yard line. Well, they had momentum when they had the ball the last time. They had first down and goal to go at the eight-yard line, elected to throw the football. And with Harmon the way he's running, I don't know. I think I'd give him the ball and let him run. We've had turnovers in the last three drives in this game. On first down, Long will throw it. Good protection, too. Goes to Hayes, and it's intercepted. Four straight turnovers now, and that interception by David Edwards. Great interception, but the ball appeared to be underthrown from this vantage point. He gets good protection here. He drops back into the pocket, has plenty of time to throw the ball. The ball is underthrown slightly, as you see. Intercepted, great interception there by, of course, David Edwards. Another turnover. And Edwards comes over, and the Fighting Illini will have the ball when we come back. 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. Iowa leading Illinois, 7 to 3. The Illini unbeaten in the Big Ten, Iowa 0 and 1. David Williams has not caught a ball here yet this afternoon. In fact, Jack Trudeau has only completed two passes. He's averaging nine per game. You go back looking. He's got Williams, but he goes the other way. He went away from him that time. And that's the freshman, Anthony Williams, number 84 out of New Orleans. I think one of the one of the reasons that uh, the Iowa defense is doing well, they're zoning off. They're going to give them the little short stuff on the inside, the little possession passes. Hope they'll drop the ball as they have, or someone will knock the ball down. Last year, as I mentioned, they tried to blitz. They got burned. This time, they're going to make them go the hard way if they can. I think that's one of the reasons that Williams has not been able to get deep. And station has been extremely tough. He did not practice Thursday. He was not 100% physically, and he took the day off. He's looking strong today. Under a serious rush, he gets it off in time to Williams, his first catch. Boy, that was a sensational piece of work by Trudeau. He was going to get knocked down. I don't know how he got that ball away. Watch here as we see Jack Trudeau escape when it appears that he's going to be knocked down. There's the receivers. You see right here, Dave Williams works to the outside and then turns and comes back inside as you see, well, you don't see Trudeau throw the ball, but it was quite an achievement by Jack Trudeau to get the ball off. First catch for David Williams. He now leaves. It's third and short. They come with two tight ends. And he'll throw for the first down. And that's the Boso of the tight end. That's the second time that they've run that pattern on third down and short. One time they hit the full fullback Rooks in the flat. This time the tight end is open. Same thing. They fake off tackle, come back and hit right in the seam to the tight end. And they've been very successful with that particular pattern. 11-yard gain. 
Illinois ball on its own 46. And Alabama, a sluggish start, won last week, now leads Vanderbilt 10 6. They're in the second quarter. And of course, Pat O'Brien will have all the scores and highlights in half time. Here's a first down for Trudeau. And it was Wilson. And Paul Hufford came around behind and brought him down. Really closed down to the inside. He was veering to the inside and smelled the play out, made a great play from the back. Paul Huff Hufford. Hufford. Sorry. 6 3, 262. This will be second down and long. Williams has returned to the Illini lineup. Stretching the perimeter. Audible by Jack. Williams. Gets away and has the first down. Inside the 45 yard line. Second catch for, De for Williams. But Devon Mitchell should have had him for shorter yardage. He fakes to the inside like he's going to block. Comes back to the outside. You watch Devon Mitchell come in here, number 21. Misses the tackle. And of course, Williams gets some more yardage. They're starting to hit Williams in this drive. Brooks. Larry station number 36 in on that hit. Iowa had its chances here in the first half, and once you let a team off the hook time after time, it'll usually come back to hurt you. Well, you're really right on that, Brent. They had wonderful opportunities. They had field positions. They had interception, two interceptions in the last two opportunities, and now the Illini have mounted a drive. Looks again. Big hole on the left side. Gets inside the 30-yard line. Great trap to the inside. There was a big hole for Rooks that time, and he really took advantage of it. It's a good drive. Number 36, the leading tackler for, watch number 36, Larry Station, is having a great day, but this time he really gets blocked. He tries to shed number 76 off of him if he can. He doesn't manage. That's Mark Dennis, and look at Rooks go through there. Now the ball is at the Iowa 29-yard line. Trudeau with Rooks, the lone setback. Three men are out wide. Everybody into the patterns, and he comes in underneath that time to the freshman tight end, Anthony Williams. I watch Station will drop off for coverage, number 36 here, and it's the same pattern that they've run before. They run the tight end inside of him. Still, I think this is the philosophy that Iowa is trying to use in this game. Don't give the long one. Let them take the short ones inside. Now, that's about the fourth time that we've seen the tight end just get inside the linebackers, four or five yards. But the line are being patient, and so is Iowa. And second down, it is Brooks. Got to the 20 yard line. He's short of the first down. Era, a year ago, we were told by Hayden that Jack Trudeau hurt him in deeper. So he was going to back his linebackers off. And obviously, the Illinois coaches up in the booth have seen the deep drops by the linebackers in the secondary. And now they're bringing in men underneath that to try and work to the tight ends here. Boso and also Anthony Williams, rather than trying to go deep and get it all from Williams. We've got a timeout here in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes still lead the Illini, but Illinois is on the move. Remaining here in the half. Illinois has the ball at the Iowa 20-yard line. This is a third down. You would think the Illini would first concentrate on getting the first down. Trudeau calls the audible at the line of scrimmage. Rooks moves over a yard to the left. It was the roll to the left, the one-on-one. -on -one. He runs for it very close. Good coverage on the play forced Trudeau to run the ball, but that definitely was an audible. They tried to hit the tight end on the left flat. Clock is still moving. Now they stop it with 42 seconds. Looks like it's short, Brent. About a half a yard. Why that much? Big down coming up, fourth down. 
be interesting to see whether or not Iowa goes for a, a blitz coming after them in man-to-man -man coverage or whether or not they continue to zone off. This is a tough call for Iowa, I think. Tough defensive call. You would I, guess, Era, that uh, Rooks would power and they'd quickly get to a timeout of this situation and go to work with the last 30 seconds. That's what I think. Unless, of course, Mike is so, Mike White is so unpredictable, he's liable to make a run action fake and go for the big one. Here I am guessing about a coach that opens a game with an onside kick. <laughs> Very dangerous. Let's check the formation. Let's see. Looks like he's going to go with a power stuff with Rooks to the left, maybe. He's, called, he's checking it off. Changing the play. Now he has to use a timeout because the 25 second clock was coming down. And that is important because it leaves Jack with only one timeout. He could have asked for a discretionary timeout with all the crowd noise. He could have turned to the referee, but he took the timeout. He was we'll trying to change the play. Sixty-six thousand who are going to try to get back in this game again and disrupt Jack Trudeau and Mike White's Illinois offense. This is fourth and about six inches. I think Trudeau is probably called pre-call to play and not will change. Will not change it. Straight ahead for the first down, and they use up their last timeout. On the previous play, he was trying to audibleize. The crowd noise did not allow him to do so. He could have called a discretionary timeout. You see Mike White trying to get the substitutions out of there. They're not huddling because the clock is at 25 seconds. Trudeau pulls out. He had Boso inside the 15-yard line. Clock is running. They've got it stopped with 13 seconds to go. Now, coach, with 13 seconds to go, you've got an excellent field goal kicker. You're down there inside the 15-yard line. You trail at 7-3. to three. You've got a big decision to make here. Well, he's got, uh, I think if he throws the ball, Trudeau is either going to go for the, for the touchdown on the play, if it's not, and throw it away if he's not there. Because the clock is against him. They have no more timeouts left. They've used their last one. And they cannot get the field goal in 13 seconds if they try to run a play. There's the linebacker coach, Alvarez. He's meeting along the sideline with, of course, the big fella, Larry Station. They'll try to set the defense for this play. It was also interesting on that, on that particular play, Iowa did not try to blitz. They dropped off with maximum coverage, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. And all Trudeau could do was hit the short man. Mike brings his son over right next to him because they'll have to hurry if they want to get him on the field. I'm sure that he's told Trudeau if he's not there, throw the ball away. We want the three points. He's got it for a touchdown. Hit him. Williams is at Trudeau's left. Inside wide man at the line of scrimmage. Trudeau's looking for him. He's got him. But he's short of it. They cannot get the field goal in. They're not going to get the playoff. Cannot get the clock stopped. They've come to the end of the first half. I think this was a mistake, Brent. He could have had three points. He should have been told you to throw the ball in the end zone, go for the touchdown, because anything underneath that, they're zoning off. There's the pass completion. But what does it mean? You see all the Hawkeyes, the clock right there at seven seconds. This is a mistake in my opinion. Said they would make their decision at the half. And they have. They'll receive it. Iowa will not have touched the ball since the six-minute mark of the first half. The ball goes down into the end zone off the foot of Tom Nickel. And on the touchback, it'll come out to the 20-yard line. And Jack Trudeau will put the fighting line eye to work. And, Coach, I wonder now what adjustments they will have to make. Illinois has been extremely lethal in the third period, which means the coaches have seen something. But I think the Iowa is going to stay right with what they've been doing defensively. No changes. Dropping off, zoning off against Trudeau. Now we'll watch to see what Illinois has done. They've taken wide, they've stretched the perimeter, but still they have not been able to get any kind of long passes. They're probably going to try to get something to get deep. Well, this time they put David Williams, number one, on the left alone as a wide man. On first down, again it's over the middle, completed on the tip pass to the tight end, Boso. 
That play has been there all game long. The tight end. Well, it's just the same little possession pass. He doesn't want to go deep, and he takes what he's got. And you see the linebacker station dropping back out as he did before. Then he comes up underneath. I think Iowa's willing to give them as many as they want like that because they figure somewhere along the line there will be a deflected ball, an interception, a dropped ball. That's the way they're playing, and they're playing it well. Look at the scoreboard. They didn't have to agree. They haven't given up a touchdown yet. And the cutback is Wilson. Short of a first down. Brent, in previous third down and short yardage, if you recall, Trudeau will roll out with an audible, bring the third man out of the backfield, either hit the tight end or the sliding halfback. Let's see if they do it again. No doubt, Mike White will go to the double. He's got Williams alone over here on the left. The two tight ends to block straight ahead. And he's out of boys. There he goes. And a roll out to the right. Too much time. You know, Mike White talked about that when we were visiting yesterday about he wanted to get the playoff much faster because he was audibilizing at the line, taking too much time. And, of course, he got caught that time. Now they're with a third down, what, six or seven? Of course, that's the reason why Mike has hand signals, too, to give Jack as much time as he possibly can up at the line of scrimmage. Might be having a little bit of trouble communicating with the wide people because of the crowd level noise. Dead ball. The way of the game, on the offense, third down. Has to get up to the 30-yard line for a first down. Drops straight back. Underneath to Williams. Fumble. But Williams grabs it back. And it looks like he got the first down. He has a slick pair of hands, that young man. He was in danger of losing the ball right there. <laughs> he really got it back, didn't he? Looked like it was a pure fumble. Watch here. In the end zone shot. Trudeau comes back. They're zoning off again, dropping deep, and there comes Williams underneath. Now watch here as he fumbles the football. As it comes out. It looks like... Looks like I don't know how he got that ball back. Mike Stoops yeah. came over and delivered the hit. Got the ball loose. And hands Williams... March going. They're at the 30 with this first down. Single setback. And they'll run it. Look. Good yardage on first down. Now Jack Trudeau will have the Hawkeyes guessing pass or run this time, Era. This is the kind of situation you want to find yourself. Second down in about two or three. It's much easier to quarterback under these conditions. receiver for the Illini. And throw. Incomplete. Should have been caught. Jerry Reese dropped the ball. But this is the sort of thing, this is the way Iowa is playing in this game. Dropping off and zoning. There was an example. He was open, but he dropped the ball. So now they've got third down and about three. David Williams and Randy Grant. They're the wide men, and they'll both go to the right side. Working with one running back so far. Complete for the first down. There was excellent patience there by Jack Trudeau. He waited until Williams came all the way across. Here's a ground level shot. You see him looking up the field. He gets pressure from his right side, and he waits until Williams comes open all the way across the field, and he delivers right on the mark. Williams has now caught five passes for 40 yards. First down here at midfield. Goes deep. Incomplete. That time it was Randy Grant, his former high school teammate. I think that's about the only second long pass that Trudeau has thrown. He did put it right on the money. 
Randy Grant goes right up the sideline. Watch this. Looks like he's going to catch the ball. He turns back for it, hits him in the helmet. And number 29, Nate Greer, is there and almost intercepts right there. He turns back. It's a tough try. Ball bounds up in the air. Greer almost gets it for the interception, but that was one of the few long passes that Trudeau has thrown. Trudeau calling the play at the line of scrimmage. He has Wilson, a running back, out wide to the left. And here's David Williams again. And now they have started to move Williams around in the various formations, trying to get him open underneath to the right, bringing him across the middle that one time, right to left. Exactly right, Brent. They've done a lot of moving of Williams. By the same token, Iowa's doing a good job of camouflaging their coverage. I thought they were in random man coverage that time, and he dropped back out and zoned again. 66,000 on hand here at Kinnick Stadium. And their Hawkeyes are ahead of the Fighting Illini, who have won 12 straight Big Ten games. It's 7-3. Third down for Trudeau. Comes right up the middle and did not get it. It's fourth down. This is a tough call. Let's see what Mike White does. He's got fourth, probably. Here comes two tight ends, and he's going for it. Both Basso and Reese are coming in. They might try to bait him and draw him offside for the penalty. Because Williams one on one. They are one for one in fourth down gambles so far, Ira. That's a left half back in the flat. Now they're going to run it. Oh, they second effort, get it. Very close, but the Hawkeye defense appeared to have stopped Ray Wilson. He did roll off the pile, and it's going to be very close. Watch here from the end zone. He's coming off tackle to the right with Rooks blocking. Watch him spin right there with a second effort. Looked like it might have been a late hit. The Iowa defense is very stout, but also Wilson does roll off of that tackling pile. And let's see here. Oh, he didn't make it. Great defense by Iowa. Kevin Spitzik, 38. He was on the linebackers who hit up in there. And now the Hawkeyes will take over. And that is their first possession in over 10 minutes of game action. And also, Illinois, the Illinois has surrendered field position here. Had they kicked the ball, they could have dumped it down inside the... 20 10 yard line but here is Iowa out on the 41 and it should be a very well rested Ronnie Harmon who brings it on first down trying to swing and break a tackle and he will not get away Bob Sebring the strong side linebacker number 31 led the way and he just wouldn't let go of the elusive Ronnie Harmon he's a very versatile athlete you see him going from the uh, left side to the right side and he's six foot two, 235 pounds, Villa Park, California. And he did a good job on Harmon that time because Harmon's not easy to break that thing down. Now, in the first half, Iowa was able to break receivers wide open, and Chuck Long overthrew a couple of them. Illinois backs off now into a pass defense. It's second and long. They fake the kill. And they go long toward Robert Smith. And it was intercept incomplete. And there's going to be an argument on that far sideline, not only for interference, but also Craig Swope thought he'd intercepted the ball. Looked like there might have been a bump down there. That's why the crowd is reacting. They thought that Swope had hit Smith. Let's see if we can see it. Very difficult to tell from this angle, but it did look like he made contact. He did drop the ball, of course. There's no question about that, but that looked like it was very close to pass interference. I don't think Mike White realized that he had dropped that ball because it was away from him. Third down for Chuck. He splits his backs. Here comes a blitz. Safety blitz. They picked it up. Smoke is still coming. They've got long flush. He'll dump it to the middle. And here's Harmon. Harmon for the first down. And inside the 40-yard line. And that's what happens when you try to blitz and you don't get the quarterback. You scramble out to the outside, man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Harmon came clean, a big play for the Hawkeyes. Take a look out here. Watch number 12, Swope's come in. He's picked up right there by Harmon. Harmon gets up right there, comes down the field. Great reaction by Long. 
comes down the field for a big play. Excellent by Long and Harmon. Here it is from another view. Swope, number 12, very successful with this in other games. He rolls off of it. Long flushes to the outside, finds Harmon, who had tried to block. Big play. And here's Harmon again on first down. And on the cutback, he's looking for daylight. Struggled inside the 35-yard line, where he is brought down. And what a dangerous back he is for Iowa. Every time he touches the ball, he can make something happen. He's got great moves. Outstanding football player, and he's having a great afternoon. He's got 79 yards and 13 carries, Brent. Now it'll be second down. And the ball is on the Illini 33-yard line. And again, the Hawkeyes have self-destructed on a couple of these drives inside the 50. Now he's forced to move. Receivers were covered. Uh -oh. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. Bad judgment on the part of Long. He tried to force the ball in. He was covered. Almost intercepted. He did avoid the rush. There's Swope right there. And taking a look at Craig Swope, he is a young man who carried a burden through much of this season. He was charged with drug trafficking. And it was not until halftime of the Missouri game that the Fighting Illini learned that he had been cleared of all charges. Totally. And he was able to play against Stanford. And then, of course, last week against Michigan State and here this afternoon. So right now, it is third down for Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes. And the draw is good. Great call. Inside the 20. Excellent call by Long. Obviously from Hayden Fry from the sideline. A draw play and a passing down. Watch a hole open up right up the middle. Excellent blocking. Number 34, Ellsworth, is blocked. And that was a great call on the part of the Hawkeyes. His own Gill, a good shot of him. Ball is at the 17-yard line. Iowa leading 7-3. Love Jordan in motion. And here's Gill. Down to the 13-yard line. A little misdirection, faking the ball to Harmon, going to the strong side of the wide side of the field and giving it back to Gill. Brent, this is a good drive on the part of Iowa. They've been down here before, but mistakes have kept them out of the end zone. They gamble one time and passed when the running game was moving well. Now Hayden Fry talking to one of his offensive assistants. I'm guessing he's going to stay on the ground and try to grind it in. Here's Harmon. Now he may be altered by down and distance. Texas still ahead of Penn State. It's 14-3 now in the third quarter at the Meadowlands. Here is third and four. quickly on the release close short of a first down I believe it is close but this will move the ball back great job by long that time Brent he read Swope coming in the blitz Swope timed it up beautifully but he hit the quick out and it looks like he's, he might have made the first down it's very very close <laughs> Looks like maybe they're shorted in. Huh? Got it. Other scores. Auburn leading Tennessee by six. They're in the third quarter there. West Virginia now has gone ahead of 0-3 Pittsburgh. 
And Alabama leading Vanderbilt, but not by much at the half, only a point. Now that's the third straight, third down conversion for the Hawkeyes in this drive. But more importantly, Owen Gill, their fullback, has limped off. So Eddie Polite is in there. Strong eye, number 26. He'll lead the blockers. And they've got Harmon. So they have lost their fullback. He limped off to the sideline. We do not know how serious that injury is. And it will now be second and goal on that one yard loss by Harmon. John Ayers, defensive left cornerback for the Illini, came up and supported very fast. Did a good job on the play. And actually, they lost a yard. Injury was not serious. Gill is returning okay. right now, and Scott Halverson, number 87, comes in with him. Might be that option down the line, away from the power eye. Halverson in motion. They'll run away from him. And it's Harmon. He's in a foot race. Cuts in for the touchdown. point these two for two and the Hawkeyes now lead Illinois 14 to three interesting thing to remember about Chuck Long when you see him in this option situation he was a wishbone quarterback up at Wheaton High School just outside of Chicago it he took his lick he did a great job on the play a great call for the offensive uh, Iowa, C Iowa Hawks here it is another vantage point down the line Boom, deals it off to Harmon. You're not going to get him. It's tough to cover the option play at the goal line. And we'll be right back in just a moment. So Ronnie Harmon has carried 16 times for 88 yards and both of the Hawkeye touchdowns as Nickel kicks it deep. Ashley will come out. got to the 16 the gamble did not succeed and we get word that there's a major story developing in another game let's go back to New York now and here's Pat O'Brien sure is Brent's sure. time and a lot of talent left for Nebraska first down here for Illinois now they have not gotten in the end zone trailing 14-3 they run Wilson and that Hawkeye defense is inspired now they just turned the corner that time and George Little was there <laughs> George Little just flew in there from the right side He's been the ringleader of the front five. That's the odd look they get with the middle guard playing over the center. And then the two linebackers who've dropped off. Here, I would think now that Mike White would alter the offensive scheme a bit in this game if he can. He's almost forced to. Clock is down to 5.59 in the third period. And he's going to have to start moving the ball. And their best weapon is through the air. There's the little chunk right over the middle again. But it's not enough. That's Boso. And that'll leave him with third and long. Thus far, the strategy of Iowa is working. Give them the short stuff, but not the deeps. And that, of course, is to counter what Mike and the Illini did to them a year ago in Champaign. Williams is split out to the left. Both backs come out, and he hits Boso again, and he's got the first down. Near the 30-yard line coming out. We should point out, when you watch the Illinois attack and you see the tight end dragging underneath and you see Williams trying to go along and Boso trying to shake an injury off right there as we take another look at it. This is the right thing to do against the defense that the Iowa uh, Hawks are using. And there he is, right in the seam underneath the linebackers. This time he picks up the first down. That was a big play, I think, for Illinois. He's off with the injury. But again, the point I was making, heavily influenced by Bill Walsh and his passing scheme. Walsh, of course, is now with the 49ers. And he had Mike White as an assistant coach once upon a time. And they still remain very close friends. This is Rooks trying to get running room to the outside.
from time to time there has been speculation that Mike White would leave Illinois and become the head football coach of the San Francisco 49ers and we talked about that last night and Mike said he would not rule that out along the way but that he does feel a debt of loyalty to Illinois having stuck with him through some troubling times and he's very fond of the fact that he's coaching his son who's the kicker on this team Chris White but someday look for that man along a professional sideline this is second and long and it's Rooks he'll be short of the first down he comes out to about the 38 yard line another audible by Trudeau he saw that he had an opening up the middle and he took it with Rooks Texas continuing to lead Penn State in the Meadowlands 14-3 and Georgia Tech there's the surprise team of the season Auburn over Tennessee by six and Princeton leading Bucknell there in the second quarter of that game. and here Iowa leads Illinois 14-3 a third down for Jack Trudeau here's Ray Wilson he's got the first down well, you got to say this about the Illini. They're, they've been patient. Two first downs. North Carolina bouncing back. They don't have to contend with one Doug Flutie in that game this afternoon. We saw plenty of him last week, I think. Yes. Yes. Ohio University shutting out Toledo right now. And look at that score. Hmm. That's a first down at the 40-yard line. Backs are split behind Trudeau. Keeps one end of block. This is David Williams. Up to the 46-yard line. So David Williams has now caught seven passes for 53 yards. This is a throwback. Trudeau rolls out to his right and then throws back to Williams. You see Greer turns him over to the inside then has to come back because he's open and Greer comes in and makes the tackle but it's a seventh reception for Williams. Jeriga and Babiar, the offensive lineman to the right. And this time they'll swing outside of him with Wyckoff. And he is hit and down. Richard Pryor, number 99. In on the stop. How's that to have somebody named Richard Pryor? <laughs> well, Mike Stoops came up and really put pressure on and forced him back to the inside. Good defense, but again, it's that third down and about two, Brent. I don't think Illinois found him very funny on that hit, do you, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> I think Wes Wilson did. That white seems calm. Brings the pocket to the left. No contain on the back side. Deflected uh -oh. ball incomplete. I think it was Jeff Goss that tipped that ball. Number 76? Yes, it was. Did you get a piece of it? The middle guard, who again has been switched from a defensive tackle because of an injury. So dropping back to punt now is Chad Little for the Illini. This is the first punt we've seen in this game since the opening quarter. Low punt. Here's Smith. He'll be down inside the 10 yard line. Good coverage by the Illini. Iowa will be coming out. It was a 37 yard punt and a minus two yard return. here in the third period with Iowa leading Illinois 14 to 3. The Illini have won their last 12 Big Ten games. Michigan, the last team to beat them. Iowa now comes up to the line. Their quarterback, Chuck Long, keeps it. Big, strong, former wishbone quarterback who was not that heavily recruited. Only Northwestern and Northern Illinois, along with Hayden Fry and Iowa, made an overture at this young man. And you know, it is so hard to evaluate high school quarterbacks and predict what they're going to do in college football. I think many times coaches look for the size of a Chuck Long, the speed, the football savvy, someone who enjoys the game. And that was certainly true in Long's case. I think Illinois needs to stop Iowa here and get the ball back, force a punt, and get some good field position. 
Right. Otherwise, Iowa could grind that ball out and run that clock. Hey, that's great strategy. You're trailing 14-3. I'd want it back, too. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Harmon. Here comes Harmon. He's got the first down, and he's the man they're going to have to be very mindful of from here on in. And they've, got him, they've gotten out of that dangerous territory. They're back in their own area. And Harmon, you can see what an outstanding runner he is. Here's a view from the end zone. There's the pitch out from Long. Good blocking up in front. Look at the wall. But look at Harmon pick the daylight right there. Gill goes through, and he weaves through for a first down. Good running by Harmon. Good blocking by the left side of the line and the lead back. And that man includes Herb Wester, number 73, who has been forced into that lineup because of an injury over there. Right tackle switch to the left side. Dave Froston out. They come back the other way. And this is still on a quick cut, but he could not get free. Boy, number 38, Bob Gleamy grabbed, grabbed him. Otherwise, he was going to pick up some yardage. Good tackle by Gleamy. Now it's second and long, and this is a stage in the game when second and long becomes a very tough decision for coaches like Hayden Fry. You're leading 14-3. You don't want to take too much of a gamble, but you want to keep that clock moving. You've got to try to get another first down here. Nice little draw play would be appropriate here. Safe play. Make it look like they're going to throw the ball with open formation. He has no chance. Gill get, just barely gets the ball before he's absolutely smothered by the entire line. Eye. Number 31 right there, Bob Sebring, the linebacker, is pinched to the inside and is the first to get there. And we come to the end of the third. We'll return after this commercial break and a message from your local stations. High atop Hawaii's Mauna Kea lies one for their first win this year in the Big Ten. They lead the fighting Illini, who are unbeaten in two games, and a large reason why, those gentlemen right there. The defensive unit, led by number 36, Larry Station. And now, in this final quarter, the heat is on Mike White and the Illini offense. They must come up with a way to get the ball into the end zone against that defense. Play fake by Long, he'll swing that to Harmon. Harmon gets it back to the line of scrimmage. That was an excellent job by Mike Heaven coming up to make the tackle number nine. He contained Harmon very well. And you see here, one of the interesting statistics is right at the bottom of the screen. You see Illinois has had it for 26 minutes to only 18 for Iowa, but Iowa's rushing of 145 yards within the key with Harmon. There are the Illinois defense holding now. They should get decent field position on this punt. Marvinitis will field it at the 36. The Hawkeyes are there. Their special teams have not performed well this year, but oh, did they have splendid coverage that time. And of course, a reminder that later today, Jerry Cooney steps into the ring for the first time. Do you realize that four birthdays have passed for Cooney since he last won a fight? More than two years since he last battled anybody. He'll go up against Phil Brown. That's a scheduled 10-rounder from Alaska. The New York City Triathlon and then the Marlboro Cup. Slew of gold, trying to make it two of two in the fall classic this afternoon and that go right now Illinois trying to get something going Udo runs hooks on first down and Jeff Frost the big middle guard stuck with him he's done a good job in there really a super job considering that he's replacing injured Hal Peterson I think Arrow, we should run through the front five to get Mike Hooks and Paul Hufford Drost is now the middle guard. George Little, number 77, has played well. 97, Dave Strobel. He's dropped off into pass coverage. And, of course, right behind him, Kevin Spitzig and Larry Station. They've done an excellent job of hitting. They sure have. Trudeau throwing quickly to the outside that time. He completed it to Eric Wyckoff, who was flanked out there. Boso, who was shaken up and has obviously returned to the Illini attack. This is a third and four. Williams is split to the right. He's got a great catch. 35, 30, 25. 
finally brought down. A marvelous catch by David Williams. And now Illinois has a chance. This is the first time that the Iowa team has tried to blitz and play man to man. Watch here as Williams cuts to the inside. Trudeau is patient. They're chasing man for man. Tough to stay with him. There you see the ball thrown right on the money by Trudeau and Williams going down the sideline. They, Devon they, Mitchell came over and got him. And on that play, that was 39 yards. Got it to the 22-yard line. You see, Williams runs right by Mike Stoops, man for man. He cannot stay with him, and Trudeau hits him. Here's a first down. The Illini want to strike fast here in the opening moments of the fourth quarter. If they can, Hooks, if he can turn the corner, may have it. He's inside the 10-yard line. And daylight was opening up that time. A well-executed play by the Illini. Looked like an excellent block from Dave Williams on the play to set it free. Let's see if we can get a rerun out of it right here. Here comes Rooks coming around the corner. There's 14 that is blocked right there by number one Dave Williams. A great block. He gets the corner turn. Mitchell bringing him down hard. Rooks, 17 carries, 84 yards. 14 on that one. The ball is set down at the eight-yard line now. The Illini trailing. First down, they bang up the middle that time, and Wyckoff was stopped. Interior of that Hawkeye defense, Jeff Drost was there, along with his large friends. George Little is playing very well to the inside. Playing the right defensive tackle in there is having a great day. Second down from the eight-yard line, and now you would think some play action from Trudeau. Yes, he got to play a little bit late that time. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Drops straight back and throws it to the tight end. Jerry Reese. Mike Stoop was trying to cover Reese, the tight end. It was 6'2", 240. And, it, and he just breaks to the outside, and Trudeau just put right in there. I thought he was going to go to the outside on one-on-one, -on -one, but Reese was open, and he hit him for the touchdown. Now, with a 14-9 situation, and Trudeau staying on the field and checking with Mike White, you would think that the Illini would be considering to go for two. And that's the lineup they have on the field right now. Yeah, they'll go for two. They've moved the ball to the left hash mark. Yes. stop as the snap was made. Here's a ground level shot of the of the touchdown. To go back into the pocket. I thought he was going to go to the outside one on one but he finds Reese and drives the ball right in there as he beat Mike Stoops in the end zone for the score. There is a penalty against Illinois and they're now going to march off as Trudeau. You could see the shot he took on that touchdown play. Dead ball. Delay the game. Offense on the try, repeat the try. So they'll be trying this two-point conversion from the eight-yard line. Williams is out to Trudeau's right. Jack throws back and it's knocked down. It'll stay at 14-9. This is a big play for Iowa. Trudeau comes back into the pocket. Rolls has plenty of time, but the defense is back. He tries to throw back against the grain. The ball is knocked down. An excellent piece of defensive work. Here's another look at it. The one thing about this is Trudeau had plenty of time. And Iowa has been successful every time they've zoned off and stayed away from man-to-man -man coverage. There it is. A great defensive play by Keith Hunter. City, Iowa, with the Hawkeyes now clinging to a 14-9 lead. And, of course, by missing the two-point conversion, Chris White cannot kick a field goal that could tie the game and leave them with a half-win, half-tie. In this situation, as soon as the Illini get the ball back, they've got to go all out for the win now and the touchdown. A field goal would not help them. A lot of time left, however, and the clock will dictate that. Deep to return now for the Hawkeyes, Ronnie Harmon and Robert Smith. And this will be a very important possession for Hayden Fry. 
And the Illini did it ever so quickly after having been kept out of the end zone here all afternoon long. Goes back and downs it in the end zone. They're saying that he touched it, but he did not possess it, certainly, outside of the goal line. And let's send you now into New York and Pat O'Brien. Pat, I understand we got an update on Auburn. I think Auburn still has an excellent chance to wind up in the Sugar Bowl this year. Speaking of bowls, of course, Iowa would dearly love to get back into the Rose Bowl picture. They need a win here today. They've already lost to Ohio State. Illinois cannot appear in the Rose Bowl or any other bowl because of the penalties for recruiting violations. From the eye, it's Harmon. Good run. Strong first down run. Good blocking at the point of attack also, Brent. He had a good opening in there, and he took it. He does use his blockers well. Doesn't waste himself when he goes in there. He reads it well. And that put him over the 100-yard mark today. He's carried it 18 times for 103 yards. By the city, the Iowa 27, second down, three. in New York. His younger brother, a freshman, is quarterback on this team. Threw a touchdown pass in their opener against Iowa State. Watched him work with the third unit the other day in practice. And here comes the older brother trying to tip to outside and did not make it. Good job by Rich Ayer, John Ayers, rather. The, the corner man, number 15 there, did an excellent job coming up and stopping Harmon. This will be a third down now for the Hawkeyes. Third and two. Play comes in from the sideline and it did not get in there quickly. 13, 12, 11. They've got six seconds. Now they come Harmon up the middle for the first down. That is the danger of using the messenger to bring in your play from the sideline. By the time Hayden Fry tells the wide receiver and gets him to run out into the huddle, precious seconds have ticked off that 25-second clock. And a couple of times this year, it has been very costly against Iowa. Well, Brent, that's why I always signaled from the sideline. It gave me a little additional time. Flashing it, the transfer, the communication. This way, you've got a double transfer. They almost lost the clock that time. This time, they get it out a little quicker. You see Helverson, he'll be the messenger the next time, so he's close to Coach Fox. This is a first down now. And again, it is Harmon. Ronnie Harmon. You got to beat our best. That's what Hayden is saying right now. Fake inside held the linebackers and gave Harmon some leverage on the corner. Got some good blocking, and you could see that he was, once he turned that corner, he's dangerous. And he's... Yep. There's Hayden, and Helverson comes out. Okay, and looking at the clock, of course, he's okay. He's at 20 seconds now. But still, that play has to be called in the huddle. Repeated. It's 15, 14. See that he's going to be pressing again. Long on the option. First down. His old wishbone days from Wheaton, and they thought Red Grange was the only star to grow up in that city. That's a good call because it's a change of pace. They've only shown the option once. They scored a touchdown on it. Uh-oh, someone is hurt. So an Illini player is down on the field near the 45-yard line. And we'll be right back in just a moment. At their 45-yard line. Illinois pinching in now. Halverson will try to loosen it up in motion, but he did not. And here comes Harmon. Good block over the right side, and he got daylight. In the 40, 35, 25. Inside the 15-yard line. A little misdirection. Play is really hurting them. They pick the ball inside the gill, come back, great blocking, and watch Gill break to the outside. No leverage in the corner. You see, Edwards tries but does not get Harmon. You've got to believe that Harmon is not a little guy. He's 196 pounds, and he can really move. Well-executed play. 
so far after that 42 yard run Harmon has carried 22 times for 157 yards good job being done blocking against guy T Patella they come back the other way with Harmon he's got it touchdown Iowa receiver and he went to Ronnie Harmon who came to him as a running back and said I'd like you to go outside reluctantly he agreed but he said coach I want to come back and be a tailback at Iowa he said yeah man you get your shot next year and this afternoon he has led this Iowa team all the way he scored three touchdowns for them and with 846 to go they lead 21 to 9 Let's take another look at it from the end zone they just struck like lightning just a pitch sweep with Gill leading Dips inside, breaks to the outside. There's Owen Gill putting a block on enough to drive Harmon back to the inside and score the touchdown. Two big plays. So we will come back as Ronnie Harmon has put the Hawkeyes in a commanding position here at Iowa City for the final 846 in just a moment. Bobbles at the 15, gets it back. And gets it out across the 30-yard line. Mike White and the Illini will have 8.44 to work with. And, of course, there's some other developments in college football. Let's send you back now to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Encountering resistance from Syracuse, there will be quite a few folks who will probably vote the Longhorns number one in the country next week. Jack Trudeau has the Illini at the line of scrimmage, and he'll be thrown now. Plus, from the pocket, he'll keep it and run. Steps out of bounds. Good deep coverage that time. He couldn't find anyone and elected to keep the ball. And wisely ran it out of bounds to stop the clock. They struck quickly last time. If they do it here in a hurry, they would still have a chance to pull this one out. The only time that uh, Iowa has been hurt has been when man-to-man -man coverage, even though I had two deep people that were zoning off, man-to-man -man is tough for them to stay with the Illini receivers. They stay off zoning, they have a better chance. Gaines is set to the right, and they throw outside him this time, and this is to Grant. It's up across the 45 yard line. Jack looking over at the sideline, getting the signal. He's 20 of 27 for 178 yards and that one touchdown to Reese. Williams now outside to the left. Williams has got it. Just inside the 40-yard line for a first down. Clock is stopped at 8-10. Good throw by Trudeau. It got there very quickly. He really rifled that ball in there to Williams for a first down. That play is wiggled in by number 14 on the sidelines. Jeff Klein was the young man who sent it in. Doesn't come from the coaches. You can see how much more time they have than Iowa. Trudeau pulling out. Hits Grant again. Could not break a tackle. Excellent defense that time by Keith Hunter. job by Keith coming in there. You get one-on-one -on -one out there wide, you miss a tackle, you're in trouble. You did a good job. Balls at Iowa's 35. And he pulls out again. Hits Williams. Williams comes inside. He just about had the first down. Dipped back inside, and now they'll have a good three yards to go. You see when Trudeau's in trouble, he goes to Williams. They're zoning off here. There's Williams on the inside, number one. And you see number 97, which is Dave Strobel, the end, 
He's a big guy, 230, trying to zone off, but he's keeping Williams in front of him. He grabs on, holds on, he doesn't get a whole lot of yardage. The wave strikes Iowa City. 66,000 trying to wash away Trudeau. And the pass is complete for the first down. He comes to Bozo, the tight end. Boy, he really drilled that one in there. It's like a sea of yellow and gold around here. Anything you can do in Seattle, we can do better here in Iowa City. down. Trudeau goes for Williams again, and what a catch inside the five-yard line. What a pair of hands on Dave Williams. That's 11 catches. Here it is again. Trudeau, watch him drill that ball in. He's well covered here. Goes up with, boy, that is a great catch. Super catch by Williams. His 11th reception for 131 yards. Mike Stoops is now down for the Hawkeyes. He had the coverage there in the secondary. We'll check on Mike, and we'll be right back in just a moment. Boom Boom Mancini at Youngstown, Ohio. He took a hard lick, and he's on the sidelines right now. It doesn't appear to be serious, but Jay Norval has checked into that secondary. This is a first and goal for Trudeau. Touchdown. He comes back and hits Randy Grant, his former high school teammate. And there's 6.18 left on the clock. What a job Jack Trudeau did getting the Illini into the end zone in a hurry. They are still very much in the thick of this. In that drive, it was a seventh straight completion that he goes through. Real money for it. 62-yard drive and very quick rolling out to the left. And this time, Mike will send Chris out there and go for the one. This would make it a 21-16 game. minutes and 18 seconds and again Hayden Fry has got a critical offensive series coming up as you watch Randy Grant goes down to the inside and turns back deep in the end zone Trudeau going to his left a hard throw puts it right there on the money excellent piece of work there he is isolated on Grant watch him come right down to the inside they turn him loose they're zoning he goes deep into the end zone and curls he's about nine yards deep into the end zone Trudeau gets the ball there quickly Bang, right there. Touchdown. Mike, on Monday afternoon in Chicago, he was still furious about that loss to Seattle. And, of course, he wants to come back and win against his former team, the Dallas Cowboys, tomorrow. And that is the game that most of you will be seeing, the Cowboys and the Bears. Then the second game of the doubleheader, and we've got six of them. You see action from... Los Angeles, Washington, San Francisco, San Diego, Tampa Bay, and Houston. So check your local listings for the second game. That'll keep a whole lot of folks busy at halftime tomorrow with six of those coming into New York City. Here we've got a dandy. It is 21-16, Iowa over Illinois. White's high kickoff. And back to the Iowa hero, Ronnie Harmon. It's out just past the 15-yard line. 15-yard line. I think the Hawkeyes have got to move the football. They've got six minutes, six minutes and 14 seconds. They've got to grind that some time off that clock because the Illini are hot. Trudeau has hit 10 in a row. He had a streak of nine in a row in the first half. And if he gets that ball back, I think the Hawkeyes are in trouble. It's absolutely time out that Iowa runs some first downs off that clock and some time off that clock. Now, Illinois must be conscious of Harmon to the outside on either side. That's the play they've been unable to handle here this afternoon. Long has split his backs, and he comes right at him with Harmon, who did not get outside that time. And the young man on the left side of the line, Herb Wester, could not hold his block that time. It was Alex Gibson, number 99, the defensive end. It penetrated, held his ground well, and forced Harmon to the inside. Can't gain any yards if the offensive line doesn't get you the daylight. Now it is second and 12. And Gill 
is set directly behind as a single setback. Harmon is flanked out this time. On a delayed draw, Gill. First down, out beyond the 30-yard line. A good call. It surprised Illinois. Beautiful call. To Owen Gill, a little draw play. They were deployed for a passing down. On a passing down, let's look at it from the end zone. And it's a quick draw. Watch here. Gill just stepped to the right. Good blocking up front. Watch him pick the daylight. He goes right through the seam. Good blocking downfield. He hits it inside. Number 31, there he is, Harmon, throwing a block for his buddy Owen Gill. Great combination. And you see Owen Gills had 71 yards himself in 11 attempts. Not a bad average. The right side of Hayden's offensive line is holding up here better. It is a first down for the Hawks. He'll come in that direction with Harmon. Stacked up that time. Blocking along the right side, of course. Mike Haight. Kelly O'Brien. White knows what a big series this is for his defense, so he gets some decent field possession. Neither team has wasted a timeout so far. Four minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. 21-16, Iowa leading Illinois. Here's Harmon trying to get outside to the left. Runs to the corner. Boy, that was great running that time because the line I had penetrated deep, and it looks like they looked like they're going to stop him, stop Harmon. He, he danced to the outside and cut the corner. I don't see how he does it. Great block by Gill, and it is extremely close to a first down. They're going to leave the ball on the Hawkeye side of the field and bring the chains clear across. There's the man who recruited the first black player ever to play in the Southwest Conference, Jerry Levias. I think Hayden Fry is probably prouder of that than anything he's accomplished as a coach. Did it at SMU. And here his offense has got a first down. That's a great tandem, Gill and Harmon. seconds to go. First down for Long and the Hawkeyes. Clock running. Calls the play at the line of scrimmage. Another delay. Another big hole for Gill. Inside Illinois' 45-yard line. And the Hawkeyes are controlling the clock. Really hurting the Illini with that draw play. They open the formation. Deployment for coverage is wide. Look at the nice hole here. Here's number 27, Dave Edwards, coming up to make a play. A great shot. He does make the tackle, but not after Gill has made considerable yardage and another first down. This is a beautiful drive by the Hawkeyes. David Edwards is shaken up. And while we're tending to him, we understand there's a stunner elsewhere. Let's go back to New York, and here's Pat. Hughes, make that hold up, Coach. Oh, is that a surprise? Color of the Longhorns number one. Nebraska looked awesome last week. And, of course, Ohio State goes tonight against Minnesota. I'll tell you, Coach, when we broke down the films of the Ohio State-Iowa game, I was so impressed with Keith Byers. Not only can he run from scrimmage, but he got an excellent pair of hands. He can catch the ball. He did everything in that game last week. Threw for touchdowns, caught touchdown passes, and ran long runs for, pass for touchdowns. Edwards walking off, and there we can see a big difference in this game. Well, they were averaging 436 yards. They haven't made any mistakes in the second half, which has been critical. And the end result is that they're leading in this ball game by five points. This has been a typically physical Big Ten game. Seven players have been helped off the field on both sides. First down, and Long keeps it right up the middle. Against that even set, they have been successful going right up the middle. They don't have a nose guard to contend with there. Apparently, they have a little key, and they know when the guards are going to loop to the outside. That's the second time uh, that Long has used that. And each time that he's uh, audible, either audibleized or pre-called that he's made yardage on it. Leaves him with a second and six, and more importantly, 
That clock is about to wind inside of three minutes. And the fans here in this state, they love this Hawkeye team. Harmon. There he goes. Outside. Down near the 25-yard line. You just cannot nice. let him get outside the containment on either side. When he gets into that secondary, he just explodes. Watch him now. Here he comes. This play has been very successful. Owen Gill throws a block right there on the end. There he goes. When he gets to the outside, he's really something. Tremendous. Ed White, number 16, just barely gets him down. Little Robert Smith was out there leading the way with a block. He runs on the track team. Coached here by Ted Wheeler at Iowa. In fact, there are four Hawkeye football players, including Larry Station. And I think he'll put Ronnie Harmon on that sprint team after this performance. He'll just say, come on out. Gill runs it straight ahead for the Hawks. They just want to hang on to the football now. There's what, 220 left to go. This is a very impressive drive, Brent. Era at this situation, when a field goal would put you up by eight, but a touchdown and a two-point conversion would tie you, I would guess the Iowa coaches, while they're thinking control the clock, also have to be thinking, let's get it into the end zone. Let's try to wrap it up if we can. I think they I think they will. I don't think they'll go for a field goal. I think they'll just try to run that clock down if they can. Mike wants just one more shot with Jack Trudeau. Here's Harmon again. Penalty marker down. We've had very few penalties in this game. Particularly the second half, it's been a, a cleaner played second half. Not as many errors and good execution on both teams. Chris watching from the Illinois sideline. We'd only have one penalty this half prior to this one. Well, we're going to use our hands on the offense. Repeat second down. You know, they should have the umpire march off the penalties in the Big Ten like they do in the NFL now. It allows the referee to set the scene for the folks here in the stadium a little bit quicker. I think that rules worked out very well. They're now second and 15 and Gill gets it back close to the original line of scrimmage. Clock down inside of 130. Iowa's taking the time out here. Oh, changed it. Okay, Illinois called it. Yeah. And we'll be back now. And the Illini will have two timeouts, and of course, Iowa hasn't used any. Have not lost a Big Ten game in their previous 12 outings. The draw again was good. Breaks it. They caught him in the blitz. Number 12 will try to blitz, and a great job of running by Gill. Watch number 12 right here in your picture to the right coming to the, you see him right in there. He reaches in, but Gill is going to the left, weaves to the outside. They're in man-to-man -man coverage, nobody there, and great call, great play, great execution, and very critical to the outcome of this game. That was an enormous gamble by the Illinois defense in that situation. It really was. Harmon. Can't get outside. Inside of a minute. Brent, it appears that number 13 probably will be unlucky for the Illini. They won 12 straight conference games, which I think is remarkable. And right now, unless something unusual happens, yeah. Illinois using its second timeout, one remaining. 42 seconds, and Mike White about to lose for the first time and of course Mike has become the villain of the Big Ten Conference because he has done it entirely different from what they've been accustomed to he has gone out to California and he's brought in some junior college transfers that have turned this program around and some of the other coaches within the conference have not appreciated the way he did it 
George Perlis of Michigan State, for one, was quite outspoken when the sanctions were handed down. Said that Mike should have been fired. White and Perlis had an exchange at halftime last week at Champaign. Mike saying to George that his feelings had been hurt. And then a security policeman kept them separated, and they went into their locker rooms. Afterwards, Mike was able to just grab George's hand as he walked past following the game. But Hayden Fry on the other side is his very close friend. They spent a long time together prior to this football game. And of course, they're the two outsiders who've come into the Big Ten. And there is the final. I can't remember a more shocking score than this one. 17-9 by Syracuse. And I understand the time of possession. Syracuse had the ball for more than 34 minutes. We're told by our producer Rick Lasavita. The time is 38. And after Nebraska was so impressive here on CBS last week against UCLA, they appeared to be just this side of invincible. You've got parity in college football. Now from the power eye, Gill straight ahead, bringing the clock down toward the 32nd mark. Only one timeout left. And now they're going to use it. We'll be right back in just a moment. Third end goal for the Hawkeyes. Long is stacked up in the middle. Remember, Illinois is out of timeouts. officials discretion now whether or not they're going to stop it and they do not as they unpile them. This game's over with Brent. A tremendous job by the Iowa Hawkeyes. difference a year makes for these two men. Mike White beating Hayden Fry 33 to nothing in Champaign a year ago. Today, having lost his first conference game to Ohio State, Hayden comes in here and beats Mike 21 to 16. Now, Illinois returns to Champaign, and for Hayden Fry, he'll start aiming for Northwestern. We are back in Iowa, has beaten Illinois 21 to 16. And our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, and Jack Trudeau, a standout and a losing cause for the Illini, but certainly no surprise about Iowa's most valuable player, Ronnie Harmon. And as a result of their performances today, a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Ronnie Harmon played a marvelous football game for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes, and we would also like to credit a splendid job by our crew. The executive producer of college football, Kevin O'Malley. Today's coverage produced by Rick Lasavita and directed by Joe Assetti. Our associate producer here in Iowa City, Richard Drake, and our associate director, Scott Johnson. Our field technical manager, Doug Fleetham. The broadcast associate, Suzanne Smith. Our technical director, Steve Gorsuch, and on the audio, Steve Pollack. So what began as a day when we were fearful that Iowa had too many injuries, especially in the offensive line, to handle this impressive bunch out of Illinois has turned around and resulted in the best Saturday afternoon of the season to date for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes. They win a game they have to win. And now they have put their act back.